the state of the global economy and emerging markets. Where does Sri Lanka stand? When Sri Lanka is looking at increased foreign direct investments to the country and at a time uh, when uh, the uh, economy is introduced with a new stimulus package, we'd like to speak about all this from an expert, an investor and a legendary uh, analyst. We've invited to um, Hyde Park to discuss with us on the subject, legendary investor, Dr. Mark Mobius. Thank you, Thank you for this time. You're here in Sri Lanka. Um, you, were, you were in Sri Lanka in 2015 too. But again, you're here at a time when a lot of changes are being introduced in terms of the economy and where we go from here. What's your initial view? Yes, yeah, very exciting to be here now because of the changes. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, the uh, last few years have not been too good. A lot of the policies were not encouraging to investment. But now with the new administration, it looks like things are really looking up. And there are some very good changes in taxation, in foreign investment encouragement, in many, many areas that are going to be beneficial for the economy and will be attractive to foreign investors. Uh, you've been saying, I remember, in the midst and towards the end of a global recession that global markets are going to do well uh, because interest rates are low. But this is not something that most of our experts say. And especially at this time when we see um, a stimulus package being introduced. And there's talk about reduced interest rates. But a lot of experts are of the view that this might backfire. Uh, the Sri Lankan economy will fall into an abyss. What is your view? How would you say that interest, low interest rates will actually uh, support uh, markets? Uh, you must remember that in the case of Europe and increasingly in the U.S., rates are moving down pretty rapidly. And in fact, in Europe, you have negative rates for the euro and uh, for so many of the uh, other uh, economies. So you have a negative rate environment, which is um, not very conducive uh, to uh, uh, companies investing because people begin to wonder what is the value of our investment? How do we evaluate, how we evaluate these different investments with a negative rate? So I think uh, the situation for emerging markets, however, is that with these lower and lower rates globally, these emerging countries that have high debts with high interest rates will benefit because rates will come down it will be easier for them to refinance their current debts and to raise more money at very low rates. So this is a very important factor when we look at the global economy and particularly for emerging markets. The other factor is that we must remember that emerging markets still are growing at double the rate of the developed countries. Mm -hmm. So you have, even with a slowdown in India, you have at least 5% or 6% growth. In China, you still have five, six, seven percent growth. And you must remember that in the case of China, uh, people, some people say, well, look, uh, they were growing at 10 percent. Now it's only, let's say, five percent. But 10 percent in 2010, in dollar terms, was smaller than five percent today. In other words, the base of the Chinese economy is much larger. So that situation, that high growth in emerging markets, combined with a very good U.S. market, because remember, the U.S. is still the largest economy in the world, and a very vibrant U.S. economy, despite all the talk about trade war, still is good for the rest of the world because there's still a tremendous amount of trade taking place. And you know the latest numbers for the U.S. economy have been very good. The only, uh, you would say, fly in the ointment, so to speak, uh, is if uh, the political situation in America changes. In other words, if Trump is not reelected, then there could be a, a downturn in the U.S. market and the U.S. economy. So uh, other than that, I think the outlook is very, very good for the world. How do you link this to, to Sri Lanka in, in the context that we're currently in, especially when we talk about the trade war? You speak of the importance of Hong Kong why we should not neglect the importance at the center of this trade war and the Sri Lanka also in the midst of a global power play, regional power play, and a struggle in terms of uh, superpowers are in Sri Lanka. How do you see this for Sri Lanka? Well, you know, the interesting point of this so-called trade war between the U.S. and China is that people think, oh, it's a zero-sum game in the sense that if uh, trade between the U.S. and China go down, then everybody's hurt. But that's not the case. 
Because what happens is that a lot of the trade and the manufacturing exports from China will move to other countries, and we've already seen that. We've seen a lot of manufacturing moving to Vietnam, to Bangladesh, to other countries. Now, of course, initially, the impact is not clear because it takes time for these adjustments to be made, for Chinese manufacturers to move their plants to other parts of the world. But once that is in place, then you see these other countries benefiting. So Sri Lanka can actually benefit from this trend. Uh, also, we speak of an agri-based economy. Sri, Sri Lanka can't veer off that, although we also stress a lot of ma on manufacturing, value addition, industry. When you say industry, people uh, instantly think about an industrial era. But uh, when we talk about agriculture too, uh, our agricultural industry has been hit by constant drought or floods, and that sustainability we don't see. And in terms of tourism, uh, that too, we see that uh, with the Easter tax, this industry was hit. But we were quick enough uh, to uh, revive the industry. Um, what sort of focus will you give uh, into these industries? Especially, I saw that um, Mobius Capital Partners were looking at uh, small um, small industries, enterprises, to fund them, to invest in them. So what is really attractive for, to you in Sri Lanka, in your view? Well, Sri Lanka has certain very strong areas in the agricultural sector. Let's say tea, for example. It's a very strong uh, uh, commodity for uh, Sri Lanka. And those are the commodities that should be emphasized and encouraged because you've got a very strong brand mm -hmm. and also strong industry. So that's one area where... Uh, we've got to focus on. Now, in that area, by the way, we've got to focus more and more on the ESG factors. What impact is the environment mm -hmm. uh, on the industry and the industry on the environment yeah. and social factors, how work is being treated, so forth. Now, the degree to which uh, Sri Lankan agricultural industries like tea can address these issues, mm -hmm. the better it will be because there are many, many buyers around the world who insist on the ESG factors. So that would, that's one thing that you've got to look at very, very carefully. At the other side, if you look at the regular uh, industrial structure of Sri Lanka, obviously tourism is very important, but also software industries. You're going to see more and more software companies coming to Sri Lanka because software engineers like to live here. It's a nice environment. So I think these factors are also very important when we're looking at growth in the country. Uh, well, Sri Lanka has been struggling with um, uh, declining GDP growth, uh, massive budget deficit, and uh, uh, an outstanding debt trap that we are struggling to uh, service every year. But uh, in your view, I've, I've come across that uh, the budget deficit, you say, is something that we don't really have to worry about sometimes, you say. But why is this? I don't understand. Uh, because if the government is making the right reforms to encourage investment and growth in the economy, that is cutting a lot of red tape, making it easier for people to set up businesses, making it easier for people to come in with money, making it easy for tourists to come in, all this will amount to higher growth of the economy. A higher growth of the economy, of course, means more tax income. Even if you lower taxes, you're going to see an increase in tax income, and that will solve the, the deficit problem. You must remember that all of these factors, like the currency rate, interest rates, uh, depend on confidence. So the degree to which the government, with their reforms, engender confidence you'll see the currency strengthening and interest rates going down. Uh, talking about reviving state-owned enterprises, that's, that is also a matter that Sri Lanka is grappling to address. Um, there have been certain acts brought in the country to revive underutilized uh, state-owned enterprises, but weren't as effective as we expected. Uh, how do you look at this uh, for a state, uh, as, uh, an economy as Sri Lanka? Do we privatize or do we go into semi-government uh, and private-owned entities or do we have boards to manage them? How do you look at this? I think, you know, the word privatization is a dirty word for many people because <laughs> they think, oh, we're losing our sovereignty and so forth. And you don't have to privatize. What you do have to do is increase the transparency of these state-owned enterprises. What does that mean? It means you list the companies. So if you take the example of China, many of the 
large state-owned banks in China, large state-owned companies like Chalco, the aluminum company of China, they're still majority controlled by the government, mm -hmm. but they're listed. Now, what does listing mean? It means that you are now responsible to shareholders, and of course the government is your main shareholder, but there's more transparency because once you list, you must reveal your financial statements, you must tell people what you're doing with the money, what the dividends are, et cetera, et cetera. So I think a high priority for the Sri Lankan government is to list these state-owned enterprises, mm -hmm. even, by the way, if they're losing money. Even if they're losing even money. Even if they're losing money, because with the listing, there'll be much more transparency to determine why they are losing money. And this will be addressed eventually. And by the way, you'll be surprised to find that people are still invested in losing money, losing companies. You know, on the internet, there are many money losing companies that are invested. So uh, it it's depends on what the vision for these companies going forward is going to be. Uh, when you say even if they're losing money, you know, invest, invest and uh, uh, make these companies go public, uh, list them. Uh, but do you think a country like Sri Lanka can sustain this in the name of transparency? Um, I understand when you say transparency is a mark, but that is something you see in the longer term. But in the immediate uh, short term, you wouldn't have the revenues uh, already um, on, on one side. These state-owned enterprises are making massive uh, losses. Um, again, um, I, I remember in 2015, you referred to um, the uh, revisiting agreements with China and development agreements that we have signed, but you weren't very happy about it. You said uh, this might not send a good uh, indication to potential investors. What is your view on that too now? Uh, well, in the case of China, they've done very, very good things here in terms of infrastructure. And what I was referring to at that time was uh, favoring China. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you say, okay, we're going to privatize this, not privatize or list the state-owned enterprise, we're going to favor China against other, in, in lieu of other countries, that is not a very good policy because that means that you discourage other investors. But I would say, generally speaking, the Chinese have done very, very well. But the key is transparency. In other words, you've got to be very transparent in what you do. And you must not be afraid of uh, losses by a company because once it's determined where the losses are coming from and why, then these companies can turn around and they could be making money. But you are not going to, notice it's a chicken and egg, egg situation. Unless you have the transparency and you understand what is happening in the company, you'll never be able to determine where the losses are coming from. So that's why listing is so important and critical. By the way, the other reason for listing mm -hmm. is that, uh, as you know, more and more money around the world is going into ETFs exchange-traded funds, which are funds which invest according to the index. The index is determined by the market capitalization, mm -hmm. the size and liquidity of companies and the market. So the degree to which Sri Lanka can increase the size of the stock market and the size of the companies that are listed, which means state-owned enterprises, they will get more money coming in automatically because the exchange-traded funds must invest in these companies that are heavily weighted in the index. Um, we were talking about Sri Lanka's potential and uh, your interest in emerging markets and frontier markets. Uh, I'd like to ask you something. With what's happening in Sri Lanka, the direction we're taking, do you think we've been, uh, a, a, we've been successful in building the investor confidence that Sri Lanka has been wanting to do since the end of conflict? Well. Uh, at the end of conflict, things were going fairly well because you saw a lot of reforms taking place. Then with the change of government and with the conflicts within the government, uh, then things really uh, went backwards. They didn't develop. Now we have a new regime which is really bent on reform and change, and that's very, very good news for the economy and for investors. So that's why you're going to be seeing a lot more interest mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka going forward. Would you put your money in Sri Lanka? Definitely. <laughs> I already have. I bought an apartment here. <laughs>
So uh, w w what areas uh, would actually uh, be of interest to you if you talk about Sri Lanka now? Uh, looking at, we, we have a vision for 2025, 2050, but when you're here to talk about um, investment potential, it's, uh, it's a big deal for Sri Lanka because you have actually predicted the shift of markets. Even during the time of recession, you had confidence, you had interest in markets, and it turned out uh, to be the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think in the case of Sri Lanka, we're now, as I say, in this, the cusp of change, which is very, very critical. And uh, if we look forward, the, the, the situation is very bright. Um, you must remember, for someone who's been coming to Sri Lanka for so long as I've been coming, mm -hmm. the changes have been quite dramatic. You know, it's not easy to realize that, you know, there have been incredible construction, construction boom here in Colombo and tremendous improvements in the tourism industry, even with the last few years of problems. The reality is things have really improved dramatically. Uh, from a development drive uh, post-war and uh, in the last few years, uh, we saw a shift in policy, yes, towards good governance, transparency. However, there has been a question on whether we went towards that kind of good governance to instill uh, the expected confidence for investors. And now with the stimulus packages that I spoke of at the beginning, um, do you see any changes, any more changes that we need to make in terms of going forward in achieving our, our vision? The number of changes have to be made, and they are now being looked at, mm -hmm. and the, the current government is looking at making a number of changes. And the most important is, and the big question to ask, <clears throat> is how can we improve the receptivity to investors, both domestic and foreign, to invest in Sri Lanka? Mm -hmm. What is required? Tax reform, ease of procedures, you know, less bureaucratic barriers, uh, welcoming attitude of the government, in other words, uh, measures to encourage mm -hmm. this investment, ease of mo moving money in and out of the country. These are factors which have to be looked at urgently, and the government is looking at these factors. And so once these changes are in place, then you can see a sea change in the investment environment. Uh, you, you spoke to me earlier about uh, listing state-owned enterprises on the Colombo Stock Exchange. But to date, we see that there is a net foreign outflow. Um, and that, that is, that is uh, not very positive uh, in the outlook of Sri Lanka. But this might change. How do we turn this around? What regulatory measures do you think we need or should we not intervene? I know. I think you've got to intervene. And one of the most important is to list state-owned enterprises, as you just mentioned. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, state-owned enterprises are a big source of income for the government, and the degree to which you can improve the management of state-owned enterprises will mean bigger income for the government. So even for a company that is losing money now, uh, listing is not a, a big problem because if you list, you have transparency. You've got to reveal your balance sheet, got to really reveal your profit loss statement, and it will become very clear very quickly that something is wrong. Where is the money going? And the transparency will much, be much better, and then you can begin to make improvements. So I would say you have to encourage the government to uh, be bold and list companies even if they're, make, uh, they're losing money. Because initially, if people don't like the idea of investing in a company that's losing money, they won't invest but the government will still have control, then the government can begin the process of improving the, the governance. When you said be bold, does that also mean do not listen to the World Bank or the IMF? To some degree, that's true. The IMF and the World Bank uh, are interested in getting the money back. So if they put money into Sri Lanka, they want to make sure that the fiscal environment is better and uh, the government begins to uh, increase the foreign reserves so that they can pay their foreign debts. Mm -hmm. But they often forget that you, in order to increase investment in foreign reserves, you've got to encourage uh, more investment to come in with lower taxes. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is anathema to the World Bank often. They say, no, you don't want to reduce taxes, you should increase taxes. But that often is a bad medicine. Uh, we speak about Port City and uh, just um, very recently 
uh, we added the reclaimed land to Sri Lanka's sovereign, uh, the, the, the country, entire nation's uh, landmass. Um, but there have been controversies surrounding the port city, the way we managed the deal and revisiting it. Uh, do you, as an investor, you, you, you obviously make calculated decisions, but do you think Sri Lanka lost in terms of uh, these negotiations? Because our current president has also said uh, he will revisit this agreement and be in discussion with China to address uh, certain negative elements. Uh, my feeling is that uh, we really, you don't really don't have to, okay, you can readjust, you can renegotiate, but the important thing is not uh, the uh, adjustment of returns between the parties, but more importantly that the project is done. Because once you have this incredible piece of land developed into a city, it's going to be more income for the government anyway, regardless of what the agreement is at the end of the day. So uh, I don't think too much focus should be put on that. The focus should be on getting it done and encouraging the Chinese to complete it and get the city up and running. But also with the United States or India being interested in economic zones of the country, there's also uh, the, the opposite opposition to it saying uh, that there will be too much of influence or power to these superpowers, um, Sri Lanka being a very small island, but is, is a strategic location that all these superpowers eye. Um, but how, how should we protect our side here? At the end of the day, you know, there's a saying that a local mouse can beat a foreign lion because the local people know the environment. And anybody coming here, any foreign company coming in, must adjust to the local environment. Otherwise, they cannot be successful. So I'm not too worried about domination by one country or the other. Of course, uh, it's a good idea to welcome everybody, you know. But look, if the Chinese are willing to take the risks that they've taken, let's face it, they've taken quite a lot of risk to put money into Sri Lanka. Uh, they should be benefiting from that, that risk. And the good news is that uh, other countries are taking notice and they're beginning to think, well, maybe we should be doing this as well. That's the reason why you have the Japanese coming in and hopefully the Americans will begin to wake up and say, hey, we should be uh, participating in this. But we haven't had a lot of money coming from the United States. That's right. <laughs> in terms of global trade, um, Sri Lanka, yes, the United States is a massive um, partner, but uh, we haven't been able to exploit uh, the um, free trade agreements that we have entered to meet with the United States uh, and the, the controversial topic of a trade agreement with the Singapore, uh, with Singapore Sri Lanka uh, FTA. But how do you look at, I mean, in this growing uh, market where markets are linked, uh, world economies are linked, do we really have to go into free trade agreements as that? Or is there other ways to navigate through this uh, question? Of course, there are other ways. I mean, um, any trade agreement has got to be fair on both sides. And very often, if one country is at a disadvantage, let's say you have an agreement with China, and you know that China can a dump a lot of goods at very low prices on the market and kill the local industry. You don't want to have an agreement like that. You've got to have some kind of reciprocity whereby, okay, cheap Chinese goods come in, but goods go out from Sri Lanka to China, whether it be tea or whatever, whatever product you have or whatever service you, you are having. So uh, these agreements on trade uh, must include reciprocity. Uh, we've been talking a lot about China, India, and Sri Lanka, especially with the United States there watching over Sri Lanka. <laughs> Dr. Mobius, tourism is uh, also the lifeline of Sri Lanka, where we have uh, a lot of revenue generated within the country and a massive amount of uh, jobs depending on this industry. Um, gaming and entertainment has been a controversial topic for us here in Sri Lanka from time to time. But as we look at uh, improving this industry, uh, going global, how do you place the importance of gaming? And it's very, very important. And I was frankly very disappointed when uh, the previous administration canceled the two major gaming investment plans uh, because such large plans include not only gaming, but many, many other ancillary industries. If you look at uh, what's happening in Singapore, for example, uh, the Sands is not only gaming, but it's hotel occupancy. Hotel occupancy goes up, shopping goes up, entertainment goes up, food, dining goes up. 
So all of these things are connected. So the degree to which you can attract people and also establish an environment where you tell the gaming companies, look, we're giving you the right to come in here, but you've got to also generate a certain percentage of your income from these other industries, these other facts, factors. That could be tremendous. I would say that if the government went ahead with uh, those two major uh, investments, gaming investments, you could see uh, tourist arrivals rise up to 10 million to, in Sri Lanka. I think right now Sri Lanka is what, two or three million? I think you could see a tripling of, of uh, tourist arrivals. Uh, you have a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, gaming and entertainment investments to the country, but this is um, this was also controversial uh, because of the tax breaks that Sri Lanka had proposed. Do you think that's the way uh, about this, or do you suggest that we also not do away with the taxes imposed on uh, incoming investments into these industries? I think you, in order to encourage them, you have to give them tax breaks. Otherwise, they won't come. They'll look at other places. Uh, but again. Let me emphasize that once you have these tourist arrivals, the expenditures feed into the economy, so the eventual tax income goes up mm -hmm. because these people are spending in the economy, and you have value-added tax, you have profits tax, you have income tax, generally for the economy, and that will bring in more tax income. Uh, where do you predict uh, Sri Lanka to be? Uh, I, I know this is the final few minutes of our discussion, but we're interested in knowing what you predict for our markets. How do we, um, where do we go from here? Our bonds, our um, stocks, and our currency? Well, if the reforms kick in, if these reforms take place that we mentioned, I could see uh, the GDP growth for Sri Lanka move up to 6 7% or more. That's number one. Number two, as I mentioned, I think tourist arrivals could go up to 10 million. Uh, that would be a very big uh, shot in the economy. And uh, I believe also you will see flows of money coming in which would strengthen the exchange rate and lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. So a combination of these factors will be very, very beneficial to the country. Again, I'll, I'd like to ask you this uh, question. What do we do immediately now going forward, because we're looking at um, Sri Lankan economy, um, our per capita income to increase. This is something we've been talking about since the end of the war, but there was a glitch uh, in the last few years. Um, what do we do immediately, uh, uh, apart from the stimulus package that the government has already proactively uh, introduced? The key is to induce confidence. Confidence comes from certainty. In other words, if a businessman wants to invest here, he wants to know what will the tax will be? What will the tax be? What will the bureaucratic requirements be? He wants to know all these things, and it's got to be intoned in regulations and laws. Once you have that in place, then the door opens and people really uh, come in. What's our potential? You're here to speak uh, on Sri Lanka's potential at the invitation of Cinnamon Life, but what's really our potential? Potential is terrific. The sky's the limit. For Sri Lanka, I believe. Thank you very much, Dr. Mobius, for your time and the opportunity. I enjoyed this discussion with you. Thank you. We had with us Dr. Mark Mobius joining us uh, to talk about Sri Lanka's potential, global markets, the emerging trends, and where Sri Lanka stands. Thank you very much for joining us at Hyde Park.